Hi, I'm Anne from madamsaw.com and in this video we'll talk about sewing pins. Have you ever like thought about sewing pins? Really thought about them? Well, there are lots of little aspects, lots of little things about these pins that are really interesting and that can help you make a better choice. And I'll show you how to use them, what is the best way of pinning, and we'll talk about the question if you can sew over them or not. So let's have a look. A pin. A pin has a point, a shaft, and a pin head. Let's start with the point. There are only two types, sharp or ballpoint and the ballpoint pins are for knit fabrics so you don't break um, the threads when you are penetrating the fabric and all other pins are sharp there are extra sharp pins and sharp pins but that depends highly on the quality then there's the shaft you have long shafts and shorter shafts. This is like a standard shaft. This is an extra long shaft and there are really tiny pins as well and they are interesting if you want to pin little pieces of fabric to a larger piece of fabric like here and if you're using large pins like this it kind of gets a little awkward at times. So for detailed work I would suggest you buy the really really short shafts. Shafts can start like at half an inch and can be like until two inch long. Then there's the material of the shaft. You have the nickel plated um, pins, nickel plated steel. You have stainless steel, this one is a stainless steel shaft, you have brass shafts and well most of them is, if you're buying a good quality pin are rust uh, resistant but the stainless steel shafts they are not as good, they, well they don't stick to your magnetic you see <laughs> so your magnetic pin cushion as well as the nickel plated ones and it sticks but not as good so if you go like this it falls off so if that's important to you look for the nickel plated ones then there's well, if you take the, the longer ones, they are like, well, maybe easier to grab. They're good for um, if you're working with different layers or if you're working with fabric like this to find your pin in the fabric. A large head and a long shaft is interesting. And if you have loosely woven fabric like this one, it's not interesting to use a little pin without a head and then it just will go through and will not stick to the fabric well so for loosely woven fabrics a large head is interesting as well so we're already talking about the heads most pins have ball point heads um, you can have plastic these are the pearlized pins or you can have glass head pins like these they are more resistant to heat so if you're ironing over them they will not melt then there is uh, of course the flower head pins I already showed you What's, a, what's good about them is that they are flat, so if you're like measuring over them with your ruler, um, they stay nice and flat and they are easy to grab. They're big, large 
and they are heat resistant, but not as heat resistant as these uh, glass eye pins. Of course, I have sewing clips. They're not pins, but I think they can also be used for like, if you're working with a lot of layers. Here I have just put in a flower head pin, but you can easily use clips as well. And what's good about the clips is that they also don't damage the fabric. So if you're working with something like really uh, delicate fabric, clips are a good solution. Or if you're working with cork or leather, um, for lightweight fabrics and um, really delicate fabrics, fabrics you can also um, look for really, really thin pins where the diameter of the pin is thinner than a normal pin. A normal pin is like six or seven millimeters in diameter, a thick one eight and a really thin one is four to five millimeters. So also something to think about. Then there's uh, the organizing of your pins. So as I showed you I have this old a uh, pin cushion that my grandmother made, so it's like a bit of a... I inherited her pin cushion. It's like a mixture of all different things. I even put some hand needles in it, some sewing machine needles. Well, it's a bit of a mess, but it, it stays here in my sewing room. Then I have the magnetic pin cushion for all my glass head pins. Uh, that is really handy. If if the pins fall on the ground, you can just pick them up with, uh, with this little tray. I have my sewing clips and they're in this basket. But I also, when I'm working, I often wear the wrist cushion for my clips. It's a little thing I made like a year ago. I have a tutorial for this wrist clip cushion. So I will put the link in the comments. Then I have another wrist pin cushion with the flower pins. And to go to my sewing class I just take a little plastic box, the box where the paint pins came in. And that's it. Oh, and I forgot this little beauty. It's a ring pin cushion and I'm using this when, for example, I will show you when I am going to have a, like, a little repair I want to do at night in, in front of the television. I just put some pins in, in there, my needle, some thread, I take some little scissors and I can go down and I'm like comfortable in the sofa and I can use chip chip the pins and stick them on my beautiful ring. So now we're going to talk about how to pin. Uh, there are two ways, well maybe there are more, but there are two common ways of pinning and that is like uh, parallel pinning, parallel to the seam line and perpendicular pinning and then you are like in a straight corner to the seam line. The advantage of this is that you can take the pins out easily when you're sewing. I also think you can work more accurately when you're pinning like this. It holds things better, nice and flat than parallel to the seam line. When you're basting you don't have to remove the pins and when you are gathering the fabric the pins will also can also stay which isn't possible with parallel pinning. Here I'm pinning like uh, one pin every inch, here one pin every two inches um, so you can put in more pins if you're pinning like this. 
and it depends on how hard the project is or how accurate I want to pin how many pins I'm putting in there. If I want to put in a sleeve for example I often put a lot more pins then it will be like one every half an inch to get the fabric really nice and flat and even the two fabrics um, I think it's important the more pins I use the better results I get and always put your pins in uh, the seam so you don't make holes in the main fabric and when you're pinning parallel to the seam line always um, put the pin heads towards you so while you're sewing you can easily remove uh, the pins and so you have to let your pin in there as close to this to the needle as possible and then you pull it out and you stitch that's also an advantage of this way of pinning you can get really close put the pin out stitch until the next pin pull it out and here you have to pull it out when you're at the top so this is more accurate either way the pinning method has to work for you and I must admit that I often use parallel pinning too uh, it depends on what I'm doing and then the last question can you sew over pins well the opinions are divided on this subject um, I can think of many reasons why you shouldn't and the only reason why you should is that it goes faster so why you shouldn't because um, your needle can break your sewing machine needle if it hits a pin because a part of the broken needle can end up inside your sewing machine beneath the needle plate because I've read about people who had the broken needle jump in their eye really and well I think that those reasons are enough um, so if you go for it and I just tried it you should go slow and if you're lucky the needle won't hit a pin and then another thing that you should that I wanted to mention about pinning is never put a pin in your mouth while you're sewing and I know I do that a lot and I try to think about it not to do it because I had a friend who had it in her mouth the window closed because of the wind all of a sudden she went like this and the pin went into her throat to her lung uh, and she had a part of her lung removed so don't do that keep your pins in your hand on the table in your pin cushion on a little tray in a basket whatever not in your mouth well that's it see you next time bye